This is it, the final lap of Medallia Superbike race number one. Cameron Bobier has led for such a long time. Josh Heron in his return to Superbike, only 1.6 seconds behind. But now it's on Jake Gagne. What can he do to try to pass Cameron Bobier? Is this going to be a storybook start to the 2023 season for Bobier, the number six, who comes back from a lackluster two years in Europe and the Moto2 bike, trying to regain his confidence with a brand new team, different manufacturer than we saw him leave with. What's going to happen between these two riders? The BMW has got such a strong motor underneath them. At this point, it looks like Gagne, if he's got a chance, he's got to do something with him, Jay, in turn number seven. No, nope, he's not close enough. I thought he might try to duck up the inside of him. It's not close enough, Greg. So now it's an all-important run down this back straightaway. And Gagne is going to have to do everything he can to get as small as he can. But, Greg, look at this BMW. It's just getting away from the Yamaha as they creep over the brow of this hill. Cam will probably close the door a little bit as he does. He's been kind of mid-track and made it really hard for Gagne to do anything as we see a bike down in the gravel. Turn 10A, 10B, Cameron Bobier coming up over the hill. There is lap traffic there, but hopefully he'll miss it. Here comes Cameron Bobier down the hill, hard on the brakes, the Tightler Cycle BMW rider in his first run back to the checkered flag. As the checkered flag waits, it is Cameron Bobier who takes victory over Jake Gagne by three tenths of a second. And he's done it. What a storybook return to the United States for the Californian. I mean, yeah, that's pretty unbelievable. I'm a little bit speechless right now, and I'm super impressed with not only both our first two, but how about Heron and his return? He ends up only 1.9 second off the win. So that bodes well for that team as well. All five of these riders, we had top five guys 3.8 seconds apart from each other. It runs over to the left to protect that inside line. Here comes Cameron Peterson. Is he going to go up the inside of his teammate? No. But, Jay, that run down the back straightaway, boy, I'll tell you what, man, those fresh and lean progressive Yamahas look like they got a little bit of extra something-something overnight. Up the inside goes Gagne on the brakes. What arm pump in the middle. He gets the front wheel off the ground, and that's going to make it to where the bike just was a little bit unstable as he went to put the brakes on. That allows Gagne to shoot down the inside of him. And look, the thing gets sideways. Gagne knew he had a doesn't look, look like there's a big speed difference, but Bobier not having any of it up the inside into 10A. And Gagne fighting right back around the outside. Just leans on him through the right. And this is the kind of racing we've been looking forward to see as Heron had made the pass on Peterson and Cam comes right back on him. Matthew Skultz is there. And if you see that sixth place bike just off in the background, that's Richie Eskins at the front. Be good out of seven down that back straightaway and hold Gagne at bay as you see Heron run just ever so slightly wide. Look at Gagne straight line up the hill, Greg, as they go up into turn two. What action we have here in Medallia Superbike race number two. For the past seven years, it's only been these two that are Medallia Superbike champions. And they are going. Front and Bobia is going to have another shot, Greg, as they go into turn number 10. Oh, they are so close. Gagne's not having it. It took everything Gagne had to slow down his Yamaha R1. That thing was protesting. Boy, I like the way Gagne comes up over the top of the hill, and he was able to close the line off that time on Bobia when they came through there. Look how quick these guys snapped the oh, bike back up. Man. Huh? Dude, this is what quite get there can the number one and we got white flag we got three brands all different running at the front skull still trying to hang in there and pick up any pieces that might fall his way Gagne a little sideways going into turn number one but choosing a tighter line he's trying to get a drive to try to figure out a way past Josh Heron but it's Bobier who leads the way through the top chicane they go down towards the S's in a moment then off to turn number five it's as close as you like it we have seen more than a dozen passes in this Medallia Superbike race number two. What is going to happen? The dress rehearsal for all four of these riders as Heron trying to find some room around. Is he going to try to go up the inside in turn number six? He will. He takes a tighter line. That's a great place to pass. Now turn number seven tightens up. The slowest corner on the racetrack. Now it looks like Heron a little wide. Bobier tries to get up the inside and square it off. They're trying to find position all over the racetrack. Who's got the drive? A double draft right now for Jake Gagne. But it is neck and neck they go between Bobier and Heron. Oh. oh, Josh Heron pushed way wide, almost to the grass, and it's Jake Gagne who takes over the lead. Now in a turn, oh, oh and Heron man. dive bombs in there. Is he able to save it? 
He does, but Unreal. to the checkered flag we go, and it's Jake Gagne who's going to come down the hill. And what a move for Gagne through the final corner. Drive to the checkered flag. And Jake Gagne, the number one plate, will take his first win of 2023 over Cam Bobrier, Matthew Skultz, and Josh Heron holds on to four spot. Oh. It looked like the, the, the BMW was just yarding that Ducati. And as you see, oh, Gagne, Gagne looks like he is out. Gagne pulling off the track, smoke coming off the bike. So a frustrating weekend for the attack team right now as Escalante now is going to be jumped up into fourth. Unfortunately, the freshly and progressive Yamaha rider Jake Gagne, that number one plate, with his championship points lead in pretty much the worst situation he can imagine. Wow. As they head down towards turn five, PJ's going to take two spots, go from fifth to possibly third. Bobier took the lead for a moment, but Heron's so deep on the brakes, but bobier has got position, so we'll hold on to it, and Heron has to just let off for a, just a moment. Matthew Schultz, big mistake down in turn five, couldn't get the bike slowed. Whoa. He's going to lose about three or four spots. Bobier wide, Heron takes advantage of that, so now the number two takes over the spot. Yeah. Love what I see from Cam Peterson. He's going to try to attack Bobier as they go down. As you see, Gagne, he attacks both of them. The Whoa. number one goes from fourth to second. And he is so close to getting his first win of the season. And Jason, this would be his ninth win. Oh, look oh. at the motorcycle moving around. He's pushing so hard. He wants to win this thing with the biggest gap possible. So here we go, it's Josh Heron, the number two on the Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati, the Pentagali V4R. He's behind the bubble, up the hill he comes. The checkered flag awaits for Josh Heron and he will take victory in race number two, a Medallia Superbike here in Moto America. And here come the pair of fresh and lean progressive Yamahas, Cameron Peterson with a bit of a move, but it's gonna come across like that. 16 laps scheduled for Medallion Superbike race number one. And we're away racing, and it looks like Bobier got off the line really well on the number six bike. As they go into turn number one, Heron's going to lean on everybody, and he'll lead the way. Bobier side by side with Peterson, trying to find position. But it's Gagne who comes out on top, the number one plate. Nobody in the field except Gagne and his team wanted to see it. Bobier's in fourth. Bobier is continuing to close this gap, Greg. We're going to have three to go when they come by this lap. And look at what Cameron Bobier has done. He has closed this gap down now to probably 0.4 of a second, 0.3 actually. 41-1 for Jake Gagne. Bobier still in the fourth. Oh, no! Oh, no. And down goes Cameron Bobier. Oh. And that started early in that corner. You could see him. Trying to get that bike under control, almost flat tracking into the corner. Too much ask for the Dunlop front tire with that BMW. And Cameron Bobier, who's second in the points by 12, is going to lose a heap of points to Jake Gagne. That's going to move Heron back up into a podium oh, spot. We got red, red flag. flag. Red flag out. Well, looking at Cameron Bobier, I asked him how he's feeling because after that crash yesterday, his left hip is feeling really sore. And he said, you know, putting weight on that foot peg, it, he really starts to feel it. But he can kind of muscle through the pain. But as far as the bike goes, he is on his backup bike because that one was ruined yesterday as Cam goes up the inside of Gagne here. Um, that we've seen him jump into the 24s as Heron. So again, you look at Gagne, he's committed at this point, and he's trying to let go of the lever, but he doesn't want to let go of the lever because he's going to run a little bit wide on some of that newer pavement. And we've seen some guys when they get a little bit offline, but now we're starting to see that little bit of a gap starting to pull away from Heron. And Gagne oh, now Heron is going to go out. past. He is going to go by Heron now too, but that is not going to be a, a, a battle for position. Heron just needs to stay where he's at. He's going to end up second. Here you're going to get a chance to look at it as he comes out of turn six. He rolls down, and this is going to be from second up to third, and then you can see how close he is. So, I mean, it is an inch, uh, you know, from, from going really bad. I don't want to see that happen. But it's time to get this 17-lap race underway. Medallion Superbike race number two is off and running, and it looks like Gagne, the number one plate, got another good launch. Will he lead us into turn number one? He does. Bobby Fong on the outside. Fong trying to roll around Gagne. As side by side they go, heading down to the bottom of the hill. Who's going to have the advantage? And it's Jake Gagne who takes the spot for now. Here we go. Gagne with another great launch right in the middle of your screen. 
He leads us up and over the hill, and it's going to be Gagne with the whole shot again. Yeah, Heron got a good jump from row two, that inside. He didn't get pinched off, which was good. He's going to come up over the top of the hill right alongside or tried to get alongside Bobby Fong, but that momentum carried him out. But again, perfect start for Jake Gagne. He defends going into turn three on that first lap, and look who did slot himself into third. Josh Heron gets through. And uh, right now, he's the only one that's even showing that he can keep any pace. Look how tight that Ducati was turned. Wow. There behind Gagne through that turn nine area, turn 10 area. Aaron had mentioned to his crew chief, Simone, spent all night thinking about how to make this bike better. And so in addition to all that thinking the night before, they had race two, which was earlier today. And I'm sure that they made a couple of adjustments to get Aaron even more comfortable on the bike. The, basically the frame and the swing arm and a couple other little small bits and pieces are still attacked. But beyond that, ADR has done a great job of developing their own parts. Motor, tank. Oh, oh Heron there. So he's going to have to just give up some time. That, like, that's, that's, that's a what, lot. That's a lot, that's of, a lot time of time he gave up. But that is more than enough. But you know, good on Josh because he knows. And he's definitely given up the time that he's, he's lost two spots. Another look at it, Jason. Yeah, he just gets in there and he gets to the point where he realizes he's just not going to make it. So he jumps over the curbing. And you're going to see him move over to the right and get out of guys' ways so that he lets Skultz go through. And then, of course, lets Escalante follow him through. Jake Gagne, as he comes to take the white flag and one final lap. He's in a position right now, Jason, where he could wrap up his third Medallia Superbike title in a row and have a nice, comfortable sail off into the sunset for the final two rounds of racing. Matthew Skultz, a Yamaha rider, Westby Yamaha, put himself in a position to ensure that Gagne could win this number one plate. But P.J. Jacobson going up the inside of Escalante, and that thwarts Escalante's oh. plans to try to get on the podium. So the 99 Titler cycle bike gets it done. Is Escalante going to fight back? No, he can't. On the final lap, there he goes up the inside. So good job by Escalante to try to get that back. They are battling it out. Front wheels in the air, the both of them. And For Escalante, fourth place. unreal. The heart that he's showing right now. And you know, when they go back and they look at this race, that team, they're gonna know it's up over that rise that the 54 struggled to keep these guys behind him. And not, you know, that, that's the place. But to fight back the way he did immediately on PJ Jacobson, Tremendous riding from Escalante here. And you got to admire what Josh Heron has done. Absolutely. He was falling back. He took the opportunity to go fast past Escalante when that fight got unsettled. And now Heron is just turning the screws and inching away on this final lap of Medallia Superbike race number three. As Josh Heron looks like he is in a really good spot for another podium this season. As Richie Escalante going through the chicane for the final time. Here we go, the number one plate of Jake Gagne has a look over his shoulder, onto the front straightaway, he'll go. The checkered flag waves, he does the hat trick and wraps up the national championship with this third place finish from Josh Heron and a great ride by Matthew Skultz to finish in second. Richie Escalante holds on to fourth over PJ Jacobson and JD Beach in sixth place. The heat trying to get, you know, the grip, we've heard everybody talk about you know, getting traction, and you know it's really hard to do that. So him and the teams did a great job this weekend getting uh, getting Richie up there. Well, you can see that Dunlop was cooked near the end of the race, and his bike control, uh, he just didn't lose speed and was able to uh, uh, you know put it up and uh, put up some numbers. <laughs>